I remember when I was first pregnant with my daughter, I was a little overwhelmed with the sheer amount of things that I was told I needed. I read countless mommy blogs and reviewed countless different registry suggestions and checklists and at the end of the day I realized that I wanted to de-stress my life and I wanted to keep things as simple and minimal as possible. So today I'm sharing with you my newborn minimalist essentials. When I registered for my daughter, I only put newborn clothing and what I found is that most often newborn babies grow out of newborn clothing very quickly. So what I suggest you do is make a capsule wardrobe for your little and instead of doing just newborn clothing, make sure to do newborn zero to three months, three to six months, six to nine months and so forth. And that way you have a really good variety of different clothing sizes and depending on your child's growth, some children grow quicker than others, some are a little bit slower. Either way, you'll have a nice little wardrobe for wherever your child's at. Now my suggestion is for each of those months to have 10 to 12 outfits max. I know it seems pretty minimal, but for us we did laundry weekly, and as long as we had a bib on or a burp cloth on our daughter, it really helped keep her clothing cleaner longer. But I did find 10 to 12 outfits really was the uh, key number for us. Next thing you want are baby sleeper gowns. Let me tell you why you want baby sleeper gowns and not just regular footed pajamas. When you are a new mom or welcoming a new baby into the world and it is three o'clock in the morning and they need their diaper changed and you are sleep deprived and also half asleep while you're changing your child's diaper, the last thing you want to do is button every single one of those stupid buttons on a footed pajama. Let me just tell you, you're gonna get super frustrated. Yes, I'm speaking from experience. So my best suggestion for you would be to buy the sleeper gowns or basically a very long dress that you put on your baby. So you can just pull up the gown, do your diaper change, feed them if they need to be fed, and then you and baby can both go back to I sleep. I also suggest so. getting swaddles. This really helped our daughter to sleep better, even though, um, not gonna lie, she's a terrible sleeper even now, but when she was a newborn, swaddling really seemed to kind of help calm her and soothe her. And I cannot tell you how many YouTube videos and time my husband and I wasted trying to get the correct swaddle wrapping method down. And uh, most of the time she would end up just getting out of the swaddle somehow. I don't know how she did it, but she was Houdini and she did it. What I suggest doing is going with a zipper swaddle. It's so much easier. You do not have to learn a swaddling method. You can just put your baby in, zip them up, and they're good to go. It's really that simple. My husband and I actually only had two. We had a white and gray one. I'll have the particular zipper swaddle we use down in the description box. Now, I was extremely blessed, or I should say my daughter was extremely blessed with a lot of blankets and particularly blankets that were homemade. But I think at one point between just all the different baby showers that were hosted for me, I had upwards of around 30 blankets and it was crazy. It was just excessive, it was too much. And uh, really I found that my daughter only uses two to three baby blankets. Two, she has her one favorite and then she has a couple of others that we alternate during washes. What I ended up doing was donating most of the baby blankets we were gifted with to a woman's shelter. And it's particularly for um, homeless women who are pregnant and expecting children. So my suggestion isn't just to like throw away the blanket, but to find it a good home and um, a place where it'll get really good use. You want a noise machine, but let me tell you a little secret. If you have like an iPad lying around the house that you don't really use or you're okay with partying with during the evenings, you can just download a noise machine app. It's free. We use an iPad when we're traveling. It's really great, you know, just to have on hand, but it also is really great for when baby is sleeping. And in the event that you don't have like an iPad or some type of device that you can download the app on, then you can just purchase a, you know, simple plug-in noisemaker. They work great as well. And they've been key essential to ensuring that my child stays asleep because she's a very light sleeper. And if she hears anything, she wakes up. So has been very, very, very essential. This should go without saying, but of course you wanna get bottles. I would suggest about a half dozen bottles, so six bottles tops. I think we were gifted with around 24 bottles, and for us that was just too much. I ended up donating one of the boxes of bottles we had because we literally never opened it. I was primarily breastfeeding, so if you're maybe perhaps doing formula fed or if you have multiples, 
um, not just a single birth, then obviously this is going to vary. But for one child who is primarily breastfed, my husband used bottles when I was away at work. Uh, but in the evenings and in the mornings, I would nurse her. With all that in mind, we found that six bottles was really the sweet spot, you know? It was uh, exactly the amount that we needed. So whatever you register for, register for burp cloth. My daughter suffered from reflux the first, I want to say, three to four months of her life, and so she was chronically spitting up, like more than I would say the average baby. So this is like the one thing that we had a full supply of because after one feeding, she would just regurgitate so much of the milk that she drank up and the uh, burp cloth would be like destroyed. So it would have to go into the wash. If they have a great little digestive system that keeps most everything down, then great. You probably won't need that many burp cloths. But for us, we at least had, I want to say two dozen. I know it's a lot, but it was 100% essential. We did have pacifiers and I felt that this was really great when she was fussy and I couldn't um, immediately nurse her. More importantly, what you want with your pacifier is a clip attachment because let me tell you, these pacifiers will go missing and you will find them in the most random places and you'll drive yourself crazy trying to like track all the pacifiers. So if you just get those little clips and uh, clip it onto your baby. That way when the pacifier falls out of baby's mouth, it's just kind of hanging there and you can take it off and um, or put it back in the baby's mouth. Just get the clip attachment, that's the essential. I would suggest maybe four to five pacifiers. That's my preference, it's not a lot. The next thing you're gonna wanna invest in are diapering accessories, so things like a changing pad. If you wanna be super minimal and you don't wanna use a changing pad, you could very easily change your baby's diaper on the floor, on a bed. You can keep it really simple, really minimal, really basic. We do have a changing pad and we do cloth diapering. So depending on whether or not you're doing cloth diapering, my diapering essentials are gonna look different than maybe your diapering essentials. But obviously the things you will need are diapers, wipes, and a diaper pail. Those are like the three essentials when it comes to diapering. And after that, you can look into some more natural organic baby balms for diaper rashes. Now I have a full in-depth cloth diapering video where I talk about the essentials as well as our cloth diapering routine. So if you're interested in that, I'll have it linked up in the cards and I will also have it linked down in the description box so you guys can check it out after you're finished with this video because I think it can be really helpful um, if you're a newbie at cloth diapering or even just curious about cloth diapering. I have on my list nose sucker. <laughs> I don't think it's called a nose sucker. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Baby nasal aspirator is what it's called. That is what you want. This was really great when my daughter was congested and uh, she was dealing with reflux issues. So like she was pretty congested really often. I'm not gonna lie, my daughter hated the nose Frida, but I think it was just cause I was sticking something up her nose and obviously that's probably really uncomfortable and strange as an infant. So uh, while she didn't like it, I loved it because it really cleared her nasal passages and made breathing for her a lot easier if she was ever sick or congested. So this is definitely essential. And I uh, still use it today and my daughter is now too. The next thing you wanna invest in is a baby thermometer. I would suggest going for something that you don't have to actually stick in their ear or even their mouth because that's just not gonna happen. So if you can invest in a thermometer that measures um, on their forehead, I found that works great for my kids. It's completely painless and like, doesn't in any way interfere with her body. So. The next two should go without saying, but you're wanting to invest in a nice car seat and a great stroller. Initially, my husband and I bought a stroller that was really well-priced, but the wheels on it were terrible. And we live in the city. We live in a very, very urban environment. And a lot of the sidewalks in our neighborhood are kind of destroyed just because um, the roots of trees have kind of lifted them. So it's just really bumpy. And uh, the stroller that we initially purchased was terrible, terrible for that situation. So I suggest getting a stroller that has very large wheels and preferably wheels that you actually put air into because it just makes for much, much smoother riding and it makes the whole experience for your baby much more comfortable. So and also, of course, you need to get a car seat that I don't need to say anything else about that. The next thing that I really loved for my daughter was a wrap. We had two different types of baby carrying devices that we used. So we had one that was more of like, you snap it in and you put it on and it was, it felt more mechanical to me. Uh, the 
type of baby wrap that I ended up really loving was a cloth wrap. And it did take some time getting used to just because you have to properly learn how to wrap uh, the cloth around you and around the baby. Um, but once you have it down, it really becomes second nature. And I found that I loved it, loved it for my daughter. She loved to be close to me. She slept better. Like I mentioned earlier, she had a really bad reflex. So a lot of times she did not like to be laid flat at all. Um, so being kept upright was really, really helpful for her. And when I needed to get things done and when she needed to sleep, I would just wrap her up, put her in uh, the boba wrap is what I used and she would sleep and I could get things done. It was fantastic. I also really love the stylish design of the boba wrap and I made sure to purchase a neutral color with no pattern so that it would go with a variety of different outfits that I have. So baby wrapping was one of my favorite experiences with my daughter and I highly suggest you get a boba wrap. And the final two items on the list are super simple and easy but you're going to want to invest in some toys and books for your kid. I have actually loved having a nice collection of books for our daughter just because she's grown with different books and has enjoyed different books at different seasons of her development. The last so. thing is obviously you want to invest in toys for your kid, but let me just let you in on a little secret. More often than not, your kid is gonna play with the most random things that you never thought could entertain them. For instance, when my daughter was like four, five, six months old, she loved to play with plastic water bottles. I don't know why she did, she just did, okay? She loved it. She would play with her other toys, but the plastic water bottle was where it was at. So yes, buy toys for your kid. I think it's great for their development. I think they need toys to have, I think they need toys so they can be um, interacting with different items. I think you need them to have toys so that they can be distracted when you need a minute. Um, but just keep in mind also that it's likely that they're gonna learn to play with other things that aren't labeled toys and um, allow them to be creative and to explore in that way. I think that's so, so important that for their development. Let me know if there's anything that you have on your newborn essentials list that I did not include in mine. I'd love to hear what has been essential for you. And um, if you're new here, my name is Lynette. I bring you content on PCOS healing through a natural, sustainable, and minimal lifestyle. So if you're interested in any of that content, please be sure to subscribe. I post every Friday, so I will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.